Hello everyone and welcome back to the 3D Tinkerer channel. So today I'm going to be showing you how to use Blender's water simulation physics to make realistic water simulations. Some of the settings I'm going to be covering will allow you to make simulations just like the one I'm showing you on screen right now. Um, so without further ado, let's just jump right into it. Okay, so we have a brand new Blender scene here. So first let's start by deleting everything. I'm going to hit A and then X and delete. And basically, let's just drop in a basic cube so we can have a domain for our physics scene. So I'm going to tab into edit mode and scale it up a bit. And basically, all you really have to do is head over to the physics tab, and we're going to make this object a fluid object. Um, now, every object that you want to have a role in your in your um, water simulation is going to have a fluid tag on it. And in this case, we're going to make it a do domain. So this cube will be where everything um, happens in our fluid sim. The water cannot go outside of this area. Um, and basically, all you really have to do after that is I'm going to tab into wireframe, and I'm going to drop in a UV sphere. And we're just going to drag it up a bit. And all you really have to do is, with the UV sphere selected, we're going to hit fluid, um, inflow, and that's it. You have a water sim simulation. Um, obviously, you'll have to bake it. So with our domain selected, we'll go back to the physics tab. And on the bake tab, if I hit bake, it'll start baking and you have a water sim. Now, obviously you're gonna to wanna to change some settings. It, with the default settings, it is going to be nothing like what you would want out of a water simulation. Um, it'll be either like too low res or it won't interact the way you want water to look. Um, but anyways, you see with the progress bar down here, we're already finished. So if you hit play on your timeline, there's your water sim. Um, you'll notice it is going very slow. It looks like more of a dripping effect. Um, but you'll notice it's only going as far as our box of influence for that domain object went. Um, so let's quickly talk about different things we can do to make our simulation look better. Um, so right off the bat, I'm actually going to delete everything and start over um, because I want a brand new cache for our water sim. And basically we're going to add in another cube, scale it up, and we're going to add in another UV sphere. And we're going to put it right there. I'm going to scale down the sphere a bit. And now you can see you can actually add objects into your scene. So let's add in, say, a cylinder. And we're just going to rotate it a bit. We're going to make it just kind of look, you know, a little, some, just give the scene a little bit of something so the, so the water can interact with it. Um, so let's start adding our fluid thing uh, settings to everything. So with the sphere selected, we're going to click fluid. We're going to make this one an obstacle, so we want the water to kind of flow around it as it drops. Um, if you're having clipping issues, you might want to change the um, value initiali initialization to either shell or both. I usually get good results for both, and if you want to change the friction, you can change the slip type. Um, slip type is also something you can do with the boundary if you want to change how um, the water simulation reacts when it reaches the boundary. So I'm going to make this a domain again. Um, it kept the bake settings from our last um, setup, so just ignore this. Uh, but you see if we go to boundary at the bottom, you can actually change the slip type for that as well. Um, that's pretty much it. So we have an object that will interact with our scene. And again, we're going to make this an inflow, but this time for the inflow, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a bit of initial velocity. Um, so if, for example, if we set the Z to a negative value, it'll kind of push the water in the Z axis with a bit of force. So that way it doesn't have that dripping effect. Um, also, before we bake, um, let's bump up the resolution so we have a finer looking um, water simulation scene. And you can do that with the final resolution tab right here. So for example, if I change this to like 125, it'll look a little bit better. But you'll notice in our bake tab, it actually tells us how much Blender is going to take up with this new bake. You'll notice it went from 27 megs to 189. And if you keep bumping up this final resolution to say, I don't know, 500, you'll notice it's going to take 11 gigs for this fluid sim. And it's going to take a really long time to bake it out. So you, final resolution is something you're going to want to play with. Um, it's not unheard of, though, to have multiple days of baking the water sim just alone, and then that doesn't include rendering the scene at all. So just kind of play with what you're comfortable with. We'll stay at 125 for this um, tutorial. Um, also, you can change the time for your simulation. So say it's a really long sim. Say you're running like a 900 frame um, water sim, uh, like res uh, render, I should say. Um, you're going to want to change the time. So this is in seconds. So basically just take how many frames in your scene divided by the frame rate, which is usually 25, and you can just set that to how long you want your simulation to be. 
Um, but I'm going to leave it as 4 in this case because that's okay for 250 frames. Um, and that's pretty much it. If you want to kind of finely tune your fluid a bit more, you can also change the viscosity down here. Um, basically how this works is the, the lower the number, the slippier the fluid will be, the less viscosity it will have. But the closer to 1 it is, the more viscosity it will have. I don't know if I said that right, but basically the closer to one this will be, it'll be more like a molten uh, glass or like a honey substance. It'll be really like syrupy. Um, so for example, um, this is with scientific notation. So you have a base of one, you can change this around a bit. Um, but if you wanted a really like wet surface or like, you know, oily substance, I guess, um, you can bump up the exponent and that'll make it a really low number. Um, you also have some presets here. If you click this little like menu button, you have like oil, honey, water. These are just the blender defaults, but I feel like they never really did a really good job. So basically, if you want a honey substance, stick closer to one. Um, so yeah, with our new settings set in, um, I'm going to select our domain object, which is this orb right here. Remember, it's that old fluid sim. Um, basically, I'm going to hit bake, and you'll notice it'll start baking away. Um, if I go to a different frame, you can see here's our domain of influence. Um, and you can see our progress bar down here. Now, let's say you didn't actually want to bake this entire thing out. You can just hit the X button right here. Um, I believe escape also works. That's usually how you cancel soft body simulations. Another thing you can change is the world settings. So you'll notice there's a world tab here in the domain um, fluid settings. And basically, it allows you to change the gravity and like physics of the simulation. So let's say you're in outer space. The way you do that is either you can change the scene settings. You see by default it's tied to the scene. So if we go to the scene tab for our blend file um, and then under gravity, here's your default settings. You'll notice they were tied to the fluid object. Um, you can either change them here or you can just turn off gravity in your scene. Um, but this will affect all simulations by the way. So keep that in mind. Um, and go back to the physics tab, you'll notice this is no longer grayed out. So you could actually tweak this if you want, um, but usually you're going to want to leave it at default if you're just running a fluid sim that you'd expect on Earth, because by default, you know, gravity is negative 9.81, whatever. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it so far. So we're going to check back here after this is done, and then we'll talk about materials. Okay, so our fluid sim just finished baking. So if I hit play, you'll notice it's interacting with our object, but it still looks pretty low resolution, even though we bumped up the actual final resolution. And that's because in the viewport, it's still set to that preview. So the way you can change that is right here where it says viewport. If you change that to final, you notice we'll get a bit more detail on our object. Um, you'll notice once it hits that cube, it looks pretty cool. You know, all that water is interacting with our scene, it's splashing off the object, and it's kind of like tapering down. Um, you'll notice our frame rate is taking a hit. It's only going at about seven or eight frames a second. So that's why you might want to leave viewport on preview so you can kind of get a better look feel for your scene. Um, obviously, though, to make to smooth it out a bit, you want to, with our domain selected, you're going to go to object and shade smooth. It'll smooth it out a little bit. Um, one other hacky way of kind of fixing the rough edges is by adding a subsurf modifier um, but that really slows down the blend file uh, I usually would suggest avoiding it because um, it's more likely to cause crashes just because of how much your scenes actually processing with you know the, all this new geometry that's being created every second um, so usually the best method is to just keep upping the final resolution until you, you know you can depending on how much time you really have for your project or how much you're willing to spend um, you always want to bump up the final resolution if you truly want a really nice water sim. Um, but you can see this looks pretty good. Um, some things might not look ideal, like, you know, the way it's curling off this object. But this is just, there's a lot of trial and error with water sims, um, whether it's, you know, changing gravity or how the, what the friction is for objects. Like, for example, with this um, object right here, you might want to change the actual like velocity. So like you might want to change it from partial slip to free slip. So there's basically like no friction on the fluid sim, but it's all personal preference, just kind of like a refining process. Um, and yeah, so if you wanted to add a material to this object, it's just like adding a material to any other object in Blender. Um, if you tab over to the shading tab, you can see with our domain selected, we can make a new material. And usually what I do is I just kind of cheese it. Oh, sorry. Um, I usually just kind of cheese it and just add a glass shader. Um, it isn't 100% true to life. You might want to add like a volumetric to it or something like that. But I'm usually pretty lazy and just want to get like a cool looking simulation. 
Um, and you see here if I add in like, I don't know, a quick light, maybe like a sun, just rotate it a bit, tab in the render view, you can see there's our scene. It looks pretty good. Um, obviously, since it's glass, there's a couple of like weird artifacts. Um, they're technically not artifacts, it's just how glass works in the real world, but when you're running it on a fluid sim, it looks kind of weird. There's a lot of like black marks around the edges of the water, and that's just because I'm using a glass shader. If you wanted to fix that, you'd probably want to, like I said, use either volume, metric, shading, or like a mix of glass and volume. Um, but one easy way to fix that black shading I found is to just add a, um, which, where is it, a smooth um, modifier. It doesn't fix it 100%. But it usually, you know, helped somewhat, mostly for the drop, for like the singular drops in the scene. Um, but yeah, you see, it looks pretty good. Um, obviously, you'd want more, you'd want proper lighting for your simulation. What I'm doing right here is really quick and hacky, but that's just because of the tutorial. Um, so, but you can see with a different view, it looks pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. So if you had any, you know, questions or comments, feel free to leave them down below. Um, this is basically fluid sims and blender basically require a lot of refining um at the beginning of the video you know i showed you what i did basically i spent multiple hours you know changing resolutions tweaking like friction on all the objects it's just it's a really long process but if you take the time to um you know do everything properly you'll get something really nice so thanks for watching um if you like the video please you know tell me in the comments and subscribe if you want more content but yeah that's about it thanks for watching